today we're going to jump right into our meter and our brush belt inspection for our exact emerge planters. All right, like with any planter, we want to start with the lid. We're going to open the lid up and we're going to check our seal. That's that's one of the most important things we don't want to make. We want to make sure that there's no splits or no cracks. And especially in the corner areas, we want to make sure they're not getting too thin. And also we want to check out our hinge area that it's not too loose. If this area is too loose, it can open up the door a little bit and and our seal won't be doing quite what it's supposed to be doing. Also, we want to look on our wheels, uh, make sure that our tines are still in good shape. If they start disappearing, we might have us a problem. So over here on the right, we want to also look at our hub height adjuster and we kind of when we take this apart, we probably want to pull this hairpin out of here and blow this area out so we can make sure that uh, when we go back together, we can adjust our hub height properly and easily. OK, now we're going to get into inspecting the bowl itself. And what we want to look at here is this edge. It rides along this wear pad over here and we want to look at this edge. There will be some scratches in this edge that's pretty common. We just don't want it to get too close to these holes because if it does, it can start to affect our meter performance. The next thing we're going to look at is this wear pad. The wear pads are ceramic and they have in them a little indicator hole or a little circle. When that circle wears out and you can't see the circle, it's time to replace the wear pad that the bowl rides on. And if you notice, this has been sprayed with graphite. Before we go back together, we want to spray each wear pad with graphite so we can get a correct hub height adjustment. OK, now we're going in a little deeper. We're going to look at uh, the seed guide. This is where the seed is placed into the brush and taken into the cartridge. We want to make sure as the seed enters here, there's no rough edges, cracks or splits. And also on the rubber side, it's a two piece thing and on the rubber side we don't want it to wear out too much this is it disassembled out of the meter and if you notice there's kind of a little z shape here fits over the top of this metal so when you go back together you want to make sure that it's fit over there properly and not off also we want to take a look in here make sure there's no dirt talc buildup make sure this is all clean and smooth now we're going to start checking our measurements on our double eliminators. First, we're going to look at the outer double eliminator, which is is setting inside the meter housing right here. And this is an exploded view. I know there's a gray and a black here. It's a little hard to see, but we're going to measure the length of this rubber finger and it needs to be eight millimeters, which is five sixteenths of an inch. They start out at about seven sixteenths of an inch. On the Emmer inner double eliminator which is mounted inside these need to measure 17.5 millimeters which is approximately 5 eighths of an inch these will be curved if they've been running in the meter they will be curved a little bit we want to pull them out straight and measure them straight they're approximately 7 eighths of an inch new okay so this is the outer double eliminator pulled out of the meter and i've painted this so you can see where we're supposed to be measuring this. John Deere wants you to lay this tape measure across the face of this, not straight up and down with the rubber finger, but across the face of this. And it's a little hard to do when this is in the meter. As you can see, this is about 12 millimeters new. So when it gets down to this point right here, it's time to replace it. To get this outer double eliminator out, on the left hand side, you'll see this little plastic tab here. You want to put a little screwdriver or a little pick under there and start lifting it up. On the right hand side, you'll notice these slides. It comes straight up out of there. So it might be a little difficult if there's some dirt built up in there. You want to tap on it or blow it out a little bit to get it out. OK, now we're going to transition to our brush belt area. First, you pull it up out of there and about halfway out, you're going to want to unhook the connector on your sensor. So now we've got our cartridge laying out on the workbench and we're going to pop open one whole side of this brush belt cartridge and that's easily done with your fingers. You just snap it open. And while we're there, it's a great idea 
to go ahead and loosen this tension on your brush belt. And by do it, to do this, you just merely turn this little indicator to where the arrow is pointing towards the top. Okay, now we've got it open. While we're here, there's also another tab right here where this my little pointer is to open up the bottom half as well, uh, or the bottom mm -hmm. little section, I should say. And when we get in here, we're going to want to go ahead and, and take the belt out. And we're going to want to blow out this area, inspect this area, blow it out really good. This is a slide here. And we're going to want to make sure this bottom wheel turns freely. And we're also going to want to make sure that the gearbox turns easily with your fingers. Now, inside the cartridge are metal guides, wear plates. The seed travels through these wear plates. So we want to make sure that they are doing their job. They need to protect the brush and protect the cartridge on the outside. Here's some examples of some more out ones. If you notice this one, it's got a, a serious seed groove down through the center. We don't want too much of a groove. We don't want to take any germ off of any seed. Right here, we're looking at the wear on the sides. This, this is protecting your cartridge housing. And on the right hand side, we can see an example of what happens if your cartridge is not installed in there the way it should be and you accidentally back up or something it could get a funky little shape to it and also in the same area we have our conditioner for our brush belt pardon me and when we uh when we have this out we want to make sure that we look at this area, inspect this area. We want, don't want it to get too thin right here because it'll break off and then it won't condition our belt. It's basic. Its job is to clean off the brush before it goes back up the tube to get more seed. The belt itself, we want to check for cracking and or separation are the most common issues with the belt. And also we want to make sure that there is no bristles missing any more than a quarter of an inch. Now we're gonna take a look at our seed sensor while we're at this area. We wanna make sure there's no cracks in the face of this. It affects the way it reads the seed. And also when you're going back together, notice there's a little notch here. This little tab needs to go underneath this portion of the seed sensor. It needs to be installed correctly. If not, you can get dirt down through the top of here and affect your seed reading or you can also affect the brush itself and start tearing off bristles. So we want to make sure that's installed properly. OK, now we're ready to go back together and we're ready to get ready for corn here. So we're going to start out with our black knocker wheel, which is a AA85925 and our bowl, which is a 32 cell bowl, a part number A92777. And our double eliminator, we're going to want to start in our middle position. And in the middle, the line goes all the way across, up and down from the middle. It does not. So we want to start right there in the middle position. Also, for corn, we're going to install our green rumble strip. And that goes down here in the bottom of the, the meter. For all, excuse me, for all other crops we're going to use our yellow our yellow smooth strip when we install this strip we want to be careful that this is snapped down into place firmly on the bottom here on both ends okay now one of the most important adjustments is the hub height adjustment and we want to start this procedure Go ahead and put it on the meter. And then John Deere recommends that this wing nut, when you start to turn it, will try to climb out of its little groove here. Just try to climb out before it starts rotating the bowl. So after we've got the bowls all on, we're going to go into our tractor, fire it up, and all we need running here is the electricity we do not need 
the hydraulics running unless, you, of course, you have a hydraulically driven generator. So first of all, we want to make sure our PTO generator is on or our hydraulic generator is on. And that's indicated here by this little green light. Next, within every planter screen, there are several planter screens you can scroll back and forth between here. Within every planter screen, there's a tools button. And that's a very quick way to get to what we need to do here. After you've hit the tools button, you'll have a list of things that come up. We want to highlight or we want to pick planter runoff procedures. And from that screen, it will take us directly to this screen here. And we can pick what we want to do with this. We want the planter runoff. We want the whole planter. And then we're going to pick torque because we want to check the torque on the motors, on the brush belts and on the meters. So once you press torque, you push start, then you should get to a screen similar to this right here. And this is going to show you all your meter torque, all your brush belt meter or motor torques. And if you'll notice here, we want to try to keep these as level as they can. We don't want them climbing up here, pulling harder. And take a look here, number 14 seems to be like it's pulling a little harder. Well, after I shut it off, I went out and sure enough, row number 14 was just a little bit tight. OK, well, after we've got our meters inspected and put them back together, we just want a friendly reminder of how to store our brush belts here on the left is is our preferred method in a climate controlled shop and hanging over something not sharp, but similar to the same diameter that it goes over within the cartridge. And at the bare minimum, we want to release the tension off of this brush belt. Some common things that we've seen we want you to, to be aware of. When you pull the brush belt cartridge out in the middle of the field, this area here where the, on the pin where that sits over right here gets full of dirt. And before you put it back on, you should take a long screwdriver and poke the dirt out of there or an air chuck and blow it out. If you think you've got it clean, and it's not quite going in the top and you shove on it, you can end up with a crack just like that. And then before too long, it's not hanging on at all. And something else that we've seen is when you're doing your winter storage, you take your bowls off, which you should. And if you forget to take the knocker wheel out of the lid, your brush might have a tendency to have a funky V in it, just like this right here. And it might take a little bit of manipulating to get those bristles back out the way they need to be.